The movie begins in the Isan region of Thailand where a documentary crew is interviewing a medium named Nim, who claims to be possessed by the spirit of Bai Yan, a local goddess who has protected the villages for a long time. Her family has been Bai Yan's shaman for many generations, and Bai Yan only chooses women to be her medium. Every year they do a very big ceremony in which a lot of locals would come to see them. She had been chosen to be Bai Yan's host after her sister Noi refused to accept the role and converted to Christianity. The interviewer asks her don't shamans have to shake their bodies or change their voices, to which she says it doesn't have to be like that. He asks her if she can treat every illness, to which she says she can only treat the illness that happens from the unseen, such as black magic, or if a spirit has harmed someone. Now one day when they were going to attend the funeral of Noi's husband Wiraj, who died of a heart attack, she reveals that misfortune had befallen the men in his family. Wiraj's father killed himself after he was caught committing insurance fraud. Wiraj's son Mac died in a traffic accident. Noi is left with her daughter, Mink, and they live with their brother Manit and his family. Now after the funeral is finished, Mink comes to Nim and gives her a list of stuff that her mother wants her to get from their house. But after she leaves, Nim feels something strange. After some time, Nim brings all the items and gives it to Noi, and only then she sees that Mink is abusing a man and threatening him to leave. Seeing this, her family tries to calm her down and bring her aside, and Nim finds it quite strange. That night, Nim notices that Mink is staring at a blind old woman, and that woman is also watching her. Now the next day during the burial ceremony of Wiraj, Nim comes to know that that blind old woman is dead and no one knows how she died. Only then her attention turns towards Mink standing in the crowd, who looks at her and leaves there. Nim follows her and sees that she is standing outside a room and behaving strangely. Later, she goes to Mink's room and starts looking for something and Neil asks her what she is looking for. She finds an amulet made of turmeric in Mink's wardrobe and at the same time, Mink also enters the room. She asks them to leave there but Nim asks her if she has nightmares and hears strange sounds. However, she pushes them out of her room. She then tells the interviewer that it was turmeric called Pataba, and they believe that it can protect them from spirits and other evil things. The interviewer then asks Mink why she put the Pataba in her room, and why she was staring at the old blind lady on the funeral day. She then stops and asks him if he can see anyone in there, and looking carefully, he sees a woman far away. He asks her what is the matter, but she just starts walking without saying anything. The interviewer asks Nim does Ba Yan will move into Mink. To which she says she doesn't know. Now the crew thinks they might be able to record the manifestation, so they decide to film Mink and her family too. The interviewer asks her how she feels toward people who are a shaman, to which she says she thinks it's nonsense and not real. He then asks Noi when Bai Yan tried to enter her, does she remember how she felt at that time? Noi tells him that back then she was in her 20s and she started to have weird symptoms that local called shaman fever. Her aunt advised her to do an acceptance ceremony to be a shaman, but she didn't want to, and converted to Christianity. But Nim went to study dressmaking in the city and they said that she fainted and blacked out. They had to go get her and bring her back home, and after that, Bai Yan entered Nim instead. He then asks her if Bai Yan wants to move to Mink, what will she do? But hearing this she gets angry and asks them to stop filming. Here Mink goes to the town dressing room to dress up for the town celebration. And she looks in the mirror, Mink notices a pair of children's shoes that she put on despite being undersized for her, but she enjoys wearing them. Later that night, the interviewer asks Mink's best friend Lisa if she noticed Mink acting strange lately, to which she says she feels she is faking or something like she is not her real self. She even shows a video as proof, where they were at the mall and Mink acted childish, like riding a children's machine, and even pushing kids who got close to her. The cameraman then follows Mink when she goes inside her workplace and sleeps on the bench. The following day, her office mates finds her sleeping inside the office, so her co-worker wakes her up and instructs her to clean herself for work. Mink notices a man staring at her as she stands, especially at her smelly lower body, so she looks down and finds herself bleeding uncontrollably between her legs. She immediately runs to the restroom and frantically cleans the blood from her legs. Now when she goes home, Noi asks her what happened to her, to which she says it's just her period. She tries to talk to her and asks her how long has this been happening, but she locks herself in her room. She then talks to Manit about this, to which he tells her to ask Nim to do the acceptance ceremony for Mink, but she says she doesn't want her child to be a shaman. The following day, Mink experiences excruciating abdominal and vaginal pain, and during her commute, she suddenly curses and slaps an old woman staring at her. The other passengers immediately stop her and push her off the vehicle. But that is not all, she does not go home and mumbles insulting words as she drinks alcohol and hope they all die. Later that night, the interviewer share the footage with Nim and informs her that sometimes Mink acts like a kid. The following day, Nim comes there and says that maybe her bracelet fell here somewhere when she came to get things for Noi. 
Manit asks Noi to go and check her room, and as Noi goes upstairs to look for it, Nim and Manit immediately knock on Mink's door. As Mink opens the door, Nim asks her if she is okay, and if she has heard someone calling her lately. However, before Mink can answer, Noi interrupts them, so Nim has no choice but to leave. After she leaves, Mink tells Noi that she don't want to be a shaman and she have to help her. Later that day, Noi accompanies Mink to the hospital to get medicine for the piercing pain in her head, back, and even her genitals. However, the doctor cannot find the cause. The interview crew then ask her if she dreamed of anything strange lately, to which Mink reluctantly shares a scenario that repeatedly plays in her dream. She sees a huge man wearing a red lion cloth and red vest with some kind of talisman all over it. He holds a long sword and stomps his foot and licks the blood from the sword, and there is a decapitated head and blood all over the floor. It's like the head is trying to tell her something, but there is not any sound that comes out. The next day, Mink returns to work, but she suddenly gets nauseated, adding to her abdominal pain. She immediately runs to the restroom, and her cries of pain are heard by everybody nearby. Interview crew goes to her and asks her to get up and that they should go to the hospital, but Mink asks them to leave her alone. Although in great pain, Mink still tries to work, but her boss calls her to his office and fires her. This angers Mink, so she immediately gets her stuff and leaves. She wears a white dress for the event and while the artist prepares his stuff to do her hair, Mink's behavior suddenly changes. She looks in the mirror and starts scratching her gums with her nail until her teeth are stained with blood. The artist interrupts her, causing Mink to return to herself and sees what she has done to herself and immediately leaves the booth. Later that day, as they parade in the streets, Mink's behavior changes again, and she ignores her friend and family which they find very strange. She then starts throwing decorations at the crowd, and we see Nim noticing all this standing in the crowd. The following day, Mink goes to her work, like she did not get fired yesterday. As the boss sees her, he immediately calls security, and instructs them to drag Mink out. As the guards take Mink off the building, the boss tells the interview crew that stuff in there went missing, so he took a look at the CCTV and discovered Mink having some smelly office workout with multiple men at work. Later that night, as Noi gets home after church time, she finds Mink sitting on the bathroom floor stained with her blood. She is unconscious from all the blood she has lost from cutting her wrist, and fortunately, they rush Mink to the hospital just in time. Nim visits Mink at the hospital, where Noi says she will let Mink do the acceptance ceremony. However, Nim informs her that Mink cannot do it, as it is not Bane God that has possessed Mink's body. After that, Nim returns to the house with Manit, and as they go inside the room of Mink's brother, she asks Manit to tell her the truth about how did Mac really die. And then by looking at their photos, she discovers that Mink and her brother had an incestual relationship, causing him to commit suicide. Nim then goes to the forest in front of a tree, where Mac hanged himself. She concludes that Mac is trying to kill Mink, so she prays in front of the tree to convince Mac not to, and while Noi and Manit taking Mink to a shaman to do the acceptance ceremony without Nim's knowledge, we see Mink's reflection in the mirror glass smiling, and when they reach there, Manit secretly texts Nim about Noi's plan. The ceremony begins, but Nim rushes in shortly after, and stops it and tries to explain to Noi that she is helping Mink with her own ways. Suddenly, Mink takes the camera from a cameraman and repeatedly hits Noi until she loses consciousness. Nim immediately stops her, but then, she suddenly runs away. Nim goes after her, but Mink quickly vanishes without a single trace. Mink's family and friends do a search hunt, but hours have passed, and they still cannot find her. Later when Noi wakes up, she asks Nim about Mink and that she has to help her, to which Nim says the only way to find her is to hold a ceremony. Nim and Noi go up to the mountain to pray to Bay and God, but before that Noi must open her heart to accept Bai Yan and beg for her forgiveness. After that, they return to the house and go inside Mink's room where they notice a foul smell, but the family dismisses it, and searches for the things that Mink carried home from various places, because in these things, there are traces of the spirits Mink came in contact with. Nim then returns to the forest and performs a ritual to pray for Mac not to harm Mink. She don't even know how much longer she will have to pray, but she will just doing it until she know where Mac took Mink. On the other hand, Noi and Manic go to the police as they have a lead about Mink. A taxi driver shares his dashcam as Mink became his passenger. Mink steps out of the car in the middle of a grass field. The driver repeatedly calls her, but she keeps walking away, so the driver maneuvers his vehicle. However, as he drives in the opposite direction, Mink is suddenly there. He had someone take a look at the scene, but there hasn't been any other leads on Mink. Now a month has passed, and they have not heard anything yet. The police do not have any update, and Nim still cannot discover where Mink is. Then one day, as Nim performs a ritual, black liquid comes out from an egg as she breaks it, and she realizes that Mac has nothing to do with anything happening. She goes to the last place where Mink was seen alive and goes through the tall grasses, and there she finds a dark abandoned thread factory in the middle of the field. She goes inside, looking and searching every corner and every floor, until she finally finds Mink on the fifth floor, unconscious and covered with dirt. 
Nim immediately takes her to the hospital, where the doctor informs them that Mink is fine. However, there are symptoms of malnutrition and dehydration. The next day, Nim goes up to the mountains to make a sacrifice, only to be mortified, as she discovers that someone has beheaded the Bayan statue, a mockery sign to the sacred idol. On the other hand, Mink has been discharged from the hospital, but she looks completely possessed. She suddenly becomes aggressive when Nim visits her and growls like an animal. She taunts Nim to guess who she is, and then Mink suddenly rips off her shirt. She then gets sexually aggressive, forcing sexual advancement on Manon. Nim and Noi immediately hold her, and Nim cites a prayer on her, and Mink reveals that the reason Nim became a shaman is because of her beloved sister. She planned to get her to wear her clothes every day, and had put talisman in her shoes. Nim then makes her vomit a black liquid, however, it only angers the possessor, so Nim asks to tie Mink on the bed. And after that, they all leave the room. Later that day, the family takes Mink to a more powerful shaman named Santi. One hold at her, he tells them that the acceptance ceremony has made Mink a vessel for the spirits. He informs them that Mink is possessed by hundreds of evil spirits and they are vindictive. It turns out that Weirod's family's ancestors slaughtered hundreds of people, and the last wishes of those dying people were to curse the family, and when Weirod's married her and because she had rejected Bayan, from then on everything was destined. Nim then takes Santi to the place where she found Mink, so he decided to conduct the ceremony right there. Nim, along with Santi and his students, prepares for an elaborate ritual to exercise Mink. In the days leading to the ritual, the evil spirits start to get more aggressive towards Mink's family. At first, she just messes up the house, but then every scenario worsens. The crew decides to install night vision cameras in their house, and that night we see Mink crawling like an animal and peeing on the dining table and then eating raw meat from the refrigerator. Now nights before the ceremony, she boils their family dog alive and eats it. She also sneaks into her uncle's room and creeps at his wife, who suddenly wakes up from a stomachache. The crew daily let the family watch the footage, until they see from the video that Mink took Manit's son Pong one night. Manit immediately runs to the house and finds the crib empty, causing him to panic, as he has witnessed what Mink is capable of. They all go to the fields, and after a few minutes of anxious searching, Manit finds Pong lying on the ground, and fortunately, Pong is unharmed. However, they notice Mink looking mischievously at them nearby. She promptly runs to the cameraman with a knife, who quickly dodges her attack. However, the knife lands on Manit's hand, who is under Mink. They immediately take off Mink over him, and locks her in her room. The day before the ceremony, Noi repeatedly tries to contact Nim but she fails. The neighbors break the door and Neo goes to Nim's room, where she finds her unconscious on her bed and not breathing. Her death is sudden, and no one knows what or who the reason is. Despite that, Santi proceeds with the ritual. His student surrounds the building with spells, incenses, and other holy things. They also do the same on the fifth floor of the abandoned building, where the evil spirits go into Mink's body. Santi plans to use Noi as a vessel, transfer the evil souls to her body, exercise her, and put those spirits in a sealed jar because they cannot use Mink as she is too violent and dangerous for them. Santi guides Noi to the abandoned building, as she has a cloth over her head filled with prayers. After that, he begins the ritual, and after a few minutes of mumbling prayers, blood starts to come out from her mouth and in between her legs. Santi immediately removes the cloth, and she kneels as she pukes out the evil spirits in the jar, and then immediately loses consciousness from the intense effect. Meanwhile, some of them are left with Mink at home. They guard Mink's room, as Santi had instructed them not to open it, until the exorcism is done. However, Pong mysteriously transfers to Mink's room, causing Pang to tear the holy spell that kept Mink locked up in her room. This causes the ritual to fail and Sandy to commit suicide as he holds the sealed jar. Pang breaks into the room, only to be stabbed in the neck by Mink. The cameraman and the student immediately attempt to leave, but Mink stops them. The cameraman quickly runs upstairs and hides as he hears Mink kill the student. However, Mink soon finds the cameraman, ending his filming life. At the same time, the power goes out at the building, causing a blackout. The crew outside uses their camera flash to film, only to be horrified as they witness Santi's students get possessed. The students growl like an animal before attacking the crew and killing them by biting off their flesh contaminated with diabetes. Inside the building, Mio regains consciousness and claims that Bayan God has possessed her. She smiles widely as she praises Bayan God, instilling a little hope in them. She instructs them to get the broken jar as they need to lock up the evil spirits again. They oblige her, so she leads the ritual, but then she laughs like a crazy person and turns the incenses upside down. Chaos and violence continue as Manit and the remaining students in the building get possessed. Manit suddenly attacks a cameraman, bites his contaminated flesh off, and then commits suicide by jumping off the building. The remaining cameraman tries to leave the building but he runs into Mink and the possessed students on his way out. 
Left with no choice, the cameraman returns to the room and hides in darkness. He turns on the night vision settings of the camera and films Mink and Noi holds Mink's head and chants a prayer but she gets distracted as Mink calls her mom. Mink then chokes her before pouring gas on her and then suddenly turns around to the cameraman, ending his filming life too. Despite the mother's desperate pleas, Mink puts on her fire. The camera focuses on a voodoo doll that has needles stuck in it with Mink's family name as its label. The film ends with a flashback interview of Nim, the day before she died. She is overwhelmed by the recent events and starts to question whether Bay and God is really within her before breaking down off screen as she too does not know what will happen. This implies that the family's weakening faith in Bay and God is taken advantage of by the haunting spirits and hence comes the slaughter. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it enjoyable. If you did, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more recap.